In this edition of Corridors of Life, we'll travel to the Northwest Florida Water Management District's Central Land Management Region, located just north of Panama City. Here, we'll explore the St. Andrew Bay watershed. We'll look at the hydrological, geological, and ecological features so important to this area. Along the way, we'll meet some of the people who have a stake in the protection, conservation, and restoration of water resources within these crucial catchment basins. In Northwest Florida, especially if you live in Bay and Washington counties, we're fortunate to have some of the best water resources in the state. It's clean, tastes great, and requires very little treatment. But we can't take it for granted. We get most of our drinking water from groundwater, so whatever we put into the ground eventually makes it into our water. If we're not careful, future residential, agricultural, and industrial land use decisions could spoil our marvelous water. To better understand the risks, it's worth taking a few minutes to learn a bit about where our water comes from, and especially how it is collected and replenished. Although there are four major sources of surface and groundwater in our region, we'll concentrate on the two groundwater sources, the Floridan and the sand and gravel aquifers. The Floridan aquifer consists of an ancient series of thick limestone deposits. From east to west, it ranges from approximately 100 feet above sea level in Jackson County to 1,600 feet below sea level in southeastern Escambia County. Water well yields from the Floridan average between 500 and 1,000 gallons per minute. The sand and gravel aquifer is commonly known as a surficial aquifer. That's because it lies close to the surface of the ground, resting upon an impermeable layer, usually of clay or rock. Surficial aquifers are particularly vulnerable to pollutants from various land uses and land practices that occur on the surface. But what about surface water in lakes and streams? Believe it or not, we get less than 20% of our drinking water from lakes and streams. In fact, Deer Point Lake Reservoir, located just north of Panama City, is the only surface supply of drinkable water in our district. Although it is a surface water supplier, the lake gets much of its water from the Florida aquifer. One other term worth defining is watershed. It refers to an area of land that collects rainfall and drains water into streams, rivers, and eventually into a lake, reservoir, or bay. The terms catchment and drainage basin are also used interchangeably with watershed. The supply of groundwater is finite and it must be replenished or recharged. Rainfall is the major source of recharge. It can seep very slowly into the Floridan aquifer or more quickly into surficial aquifers that lie at or near the land surface. As our area grows and develops, so does the threat or risk of contamination to our water supply. Protection of this precious resource in our area is the responsibility of the Northwest Florida Water Management District one of five such districts in the state. In Florida, uh, managing water, I think, is, is particularly important. First of all, for water supply purposes, um, we are a very, very large state that continues to expand. Water supply um, is, of course, is what drives that, that development. And so uh, protecting our water supply sources, developing new sources of water uh, is especially important. Essential to that protection is land acquisition. Many of the lands that we have acquired uh, since 1984 primarily uh, are composed of the major floodplains of the major river systems in northwest Florida. And we do this to protect the downstream estuarine systems and the bay systems because those floodplains play an important role in providing uh, nutrients to those systems which will maintain the uh, productivity of those bay systems for the public, and for economic well-being, for the seafood industry and other uh, industries related to uh, healthy, productive waters. However, protection does not exclude the public from enjoying these natural places. 
this particular district has always um, made public access to district properties a, a very, very high priority. Uh, ever since we first started purchasing properties back in the early 80s, uh, we elected to make those open to the public uh, for recreational activities, whether those be hiking, horseback riding, hunting. Uh, and I'm very, very pleased to be able to say about 100%, almost 100% of our properties are, are open to the public, and it's just a high priority for us. To date, the district has spent almost $140 million uh, in, in public funds to acquire and protect water resource uh, protection lands in Northwest Florida. And then water supply, um, that's going to be a continuing focus of the district. The population of Florida is going to continue to expand, especially with the baby boom generation reaching retirement and a proportion of those coming to Florida and more and more discovering Northwest Florida. So I expect that water supply is going to continue to be a, a big focus of the district. We begin our journey at the district's sole source of potable or drinkable surface water. This is Panama City and nearby Panama City Beach, the population center of Bay County located at the southern end of the St. Andrews Bay watershed. An estimated 72,000 or 44% of the county's 163,000 people live and work here. The area is a popular vacation destination as well. As far as Florida cities go, Panama City and Panama City Beach are modest municipalities. However, considering its proximity to the Gulf Coast and plans for a regional airport nearby, the area is expected to grow. And of course, with growth comes an increase in demand for portable, clean water. Bay County gets all of its public water from Deer Point Lake Reservoir, located just seven miles north of Panama City. The local water utility is permitted to take up to 69 and a half million gallons of water per day, but 40 to 45 million gallons are typical. Under normal conditions, the lake gets about 40% of its water from rainfall and surface runoff. But during dry times, 80% of the water flowing into the lake comes exclusively from Econfina Creek. On average, about 300 million gallons of water or more per day comes courtesy of the creek. The Northwest Florida Water Management District owns most of the creek corridor that has its origins in southwestern Jackson County. All this water in Deer Point Lake has a humble origin. Let's go upstream and take a look. From Deer Point Lake Dam just above St. Andrew Bay, we travel north and then east for some tea-stained water. North Florida's rivers are so beautiful and fantastic. I'm in Econ Fina Creek drainage here. This is up near the headwaters of the stream near a place called Fountain. What's so exquisite about Econfina Creek is that it is composed of three major kinds of stream. This is the blackwater portion, which receives its discoloration from the organic material that's decomposing in the adjacent floodplain. During rains and when the creek is high, the water works back into the creek, bringing with it organic acids that stain it like this, like tea, as a matter of fact. That's one of the tannins in tea is the same kind of material that's in this water. Oh, it's unsweetened. This is a great place to talk about floodplain environments. Every stream has a low water channel and a broader floodplain. It's all part of the bed of the river. In this particular case, the floodplain is quite broad and only has water flowing in it during high water events during heavy rains. This particular swampy floodplain is dominated by things like black tie tie, which you see here, 
and all behind me, all these little twisted black stems. This is swamp tupelo. And right here is an interesting story. This is the top of an old slash pine that used to be in here. It was logged out. I see stumps all over the place where man, maybe 50 to 60, 70 years ago, cut out some very valuable lumber, which hasn't replaced itself in here. And it might take decades or probably centuries to get back to its pristine condition. Anyway, it's a floodplain habitat. You always have to look for the hand of man on these sorts of situations, but it's still very interesting and it's all valuable to the quality of water in that creek over there because it filters things that come into it through this beautiful swampy environment and helps clean the water going into the stream. From the headwaters, it's a short canoe ride to the creek's dramatic canyons of clay. When the water is low, you can paddle through this section of the creek called the chutes. Here we can view ancient clay revealing the foundation of a surficial aquifer. This is what it's all about, Econ Fina Creek. You're looking at a fantastic valley cut into very, very hard clay. This clay is really important because it's relatively impermeable to water leaking down through it. So what happens? Sand on top of this clay captures rainwater, which leaks down and hits that clay and perches there. That's called a surficial aquifer. A little bit of the water in that surficial aquifer is draining right there. And just downstream, I'm going to show you some fantastic large streams that come out of that same sand body perched on this very clay called steep heads. animals I dearly love. This is a salamander, a fairly good size, but actually it'll get about three feet long. These are called sirens, and they're in a family that only has two legs just behind the head, no hind legs at all. But it lives forever in water, common in the Econ Fina Creek Basin swamps like you see behind me. Um, fascinating animals. We don't know a lot about their biology, to tell you the truth. And I've always wanted a good picture of this, so I have an aquarium just over there. I'm gonna take this little baby up here and get myself a photograph. From the chutes, it's back on land as we hike along the creek on Florida's scenic footpath. We have people enjoying the Florida Trail from all over the country, through hikers from South Florida and from other parts of the country. Uh, probably most of the uh, use of the trail is by locals in the Bay County area and Panama City. Um, and of course our own uh, Florida Trail members enjoy the trail. The Florida Trail Association is the volunteer association that builds, protects, and manages the, uh, the entire Florida National Scenic Trail as well as the Florida Trail System, which are small uh, side loop trails off of the National Scenic Trail, which is a through hike all the way down in uh, Big Cypress National Park in the Everglades until Gulf Islands National Seashore in the, uh, in the Panhandle here. So that's 1,400 miles of trail that not quite connected yet, but we're working on it with all of our partners to fill in those gaps. Well, the Water Management District is one of 35 uh, partners that we work with, uh, one of many land managers and probably one of our better partners in terms of uh, getting things done out on the field uh, and, and in a timely and efficient manner above all. But they provide great on-the-ground support for us during all of our construction projects and all of that uh, local knowledge that coming from another office elsewhere wouldn't know about the area. So they definitely help us practice with our best management practices on the ground uh, in construction and trail planning and all of those things you need to, to maintain a hiking trail. 
we are all volunteers here on the Florida Trail. There is a staff in Tallahassee, um, a paid staff, but in terms of these chapters, like our chapter, the Panhandle chapter, we're all volunteers and we're out here because we enjoy it and um, because we want to give something back and uh, we love being in the outdoors and also we really want to preserve some little piece of the wilderness for future generations. Well, this bridge um, was quite an achievement for a volunteer organization. Uh, it was a fully engineered um, a design provided by the Forest Service, and, uh, and they would normally send it out to a contractor, which might charge up to $500,000 to build it. And we, with volunteer labor, built it for only $40,000, um, and in two months where it might have taken six. Uh, and it was significantly less equipment, so the Water Management District was a great help in giving us access routes that were most uh, convenient for our equipment and our volunteers, and really keeping a uh, great base camp and keeping folks happy while they're working to make up that <laughs> huge difference in funding. That uh, it sweat equity is what's making up the difference on that one. You know, building a through trail is a tricky thing, especially as development is happening around you. Those uh, conservation easements are harder to get a hold of, so in our efforts to connect all the state parks and natural areas, we have to often cross private lands, and landowners will uh, occasionally allow us hiking access through their property, and it makes all the difference in the world.